Hello, my name is Dmitry Kurzhanov and today I would like to present our recent paper about oxygen 17 MRI to quantify oxygen metabolic rate and using the method of profile likelihood analysis. This work was done at the University Medical Center of Freiburg in Germany in cooperation with the Institute of Physics from University of Freiburg. So oxygen. Oxygen is the most important necessity of human life. We can't live without oxygen. And oxygen metabolism is altered in various diseases. In brain tumor regions, for example here on the right you see the proton MRI images of a glioblastoma tumor patient and here, after gadolinium injection, a severe tumor region can be seen. Oxygen metabolism is also altered in stroke and in neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease. Those diseases uh, account for about 30% death in the United States and in Europe. So it is really desirable to quantify the oxygen metabolism and to directly clinical, clinically measure it. The metabolism can be quantified by cerebral metabolic of, of oxygen consumption, CMRO2. There are some methods to quantify CMRO2. So first is 15 no pet where uh, the two photons are produced after annihilation of the emitted positrons with surrounding electrons and they are emitted in the opposite direction and can be uh, detected. The, there are some, however, there are some significant limitations that prevent a widespread use of 15 or PET. First, it is invasive, requiring intravenous injection and involves patient exposure to ionizing radiation and second it is costly and the short half-life of only two minutes requires on-site on isotope production with a cyclotron which few sites around the world are equipped with. Several proton MRI based methods were proposed to quantify CMRO2 and they can provide high spatial and temporal resolution but they are indirect. Some assumptions are not valid under pathological conditions and calibration procedures are challenging. An alternative method is direct 17 MRI with 17 gas inhalation and today we will learn what it's all about. Let's have a look at cellular metabolism. Inhaled oxygen is bound to hemoglobin and derived through the blood and then it passes into the cell membrane through the brain, uh, brain blood brain barrier together with glucose and there several reactions take place where for example adenine 3 phosphate at ATP molecule the energy currency of the cell participate in the end of this reaction in mitochondria, the end product of water is formed and then released further in the blood. This process of oxygen metabolization is quantified with CMRO2. CMRO2 gives a quantitative information about how much micromole of H to 17 O is produced per gram tissue within one minute. So oxygen. There are several isotopes of oxygen but only oxygen 17 is the only stable MR detectable oxygen isotope. It has a nuclear spin of 5 half and very low natural abundance about 0.037%. It means that the its MR sensitivity is 100,000 times lower compared to the protons. Plus, it have 
it has fast T1 and T2 star relaxation of about 2 milliseconds. So here uh, in the upper part you see the proton MRI image and below the oxygen 17 MRI image. But 17 MR image do not, does not provide any additional anatomical information. But we can get metabolic information from dynamics during 17 o gas inhalation using 17, go 17 o gas as a tracer. So the patient is lying in the scanner and it inhales 17 o gas. A series of 3D images I acquired, for example, the total duration of experiment might be 40 to 45 minutes with a typical temporal resolution of one minute. So in the beginning, the natural abundance H270 signal is acquired. Then in the second phase of the experiment, when patient inhales 17 gas, there is increase of the detected signal. And this increase is exclusively pro proportional to the amount of metabolized H270 water. Because only when oxygen 17 is in water molecule, it can be detected. For example, when it's bound to hemoglobin or in gas phase, the relaxation times are too fast. Additionally, we use a rebreathing system, which stores the exhaled 17 o gas and reuses in subsequent gas inhalation. In the last fourth phase, the, pres the patient is, is breathing room air. A pharmacokinetic model can be then applied for this tissue-specific signal time curves to extract our target parameter CMRO2. Okay, so today I would present a part of our 17 project and here we focus on several aspects. So the aim of the work was to enable CMRO2 measurement with 17 MRI at a clinical free Tesla MRI system. We, we wanted to analyze CMRO2 identifiability. It means can we really extract this model parameter? Can we get it or not? And to develop advanced pharmacokinetic model to account for pulse delivery of 17 gas. So we delivered gas and pulses to effectively to more efficiently use this rare and costly gas. Let's have a look at the problem statement. So H270 con concentration can be represented as order di differential equation with which depends on some initial values, other model parameters and external stimulus. The measured magnitude of 17 or MR signal depends on this H270 concentration and there is also noise on top that we assume to be Gaussian. Then to compare the model response to the measured data, the chi-squared can be calculated. And then the optimal parameter set is established through minimization of the chi-squared, whereas the profile likelihood of a particular parameter is the minimization of chi-squared for all other parameters. The method of the profile likelihood allows us to determine real confidence intervals. So what I mean is that typically asymptotic confidence intervals are used. So it means the value is given like 10 plus minus 2. But for nonlinear models, and in our case it is nonlinear model, uh, this assumption is not valid and a likelihood based confidence interval should be calculated. For example, if we explore the profile likelihood of a, of a particular parameter, so there is a minimum. And if asymptotic confidence intervals are calculated, then one could say, okay, it's uh, 
the parameter is identifiable, but in the reality, when the profile likelihood analysis is performed, it can be seen that the, the upper threshold that corresponds to 95% confidence is not heated on the right side. It means that in this case the parameter is not identifiable. So uh, there are two types of non-identifiability. So first is a structural non-identifiability is what you can see on the left where the per parameter profile is flat. So it means the model could not be used to quantify this parameter. The second type is a practical non-identifiability as you see here. So this threshold, 95% threshold is hit only on the right path. In this case there is limited amount or quality of experimental data. And in case from the both size, sides the threshold is heated, then the parameter is identifiable. For our model, so let's have a look a bit in detail. So let's assume a volume and the change of H270 concentration in this volume can be due to metabolization of new water molecules or the mo water mo molecules can diffuse into the volume or diffuse out of the volume. And there are also two rates, two parameters describing the flow in and flow out and there is also a, which describes the enrichment fraction, that depends on the rate at which fresh sentinel binds to hemoglobin. For this, a literature value can be used. And the other model parameter is 17 O enrichment fraction of the inhaled gas above natural abundance. And for example, the B here is the amount of 17 O in blood, so it's it's proportional to the integral of A. For constant alpha values, there is an analytical solution of this ordinary equation. But um, it for pulse delivery of oxygen 17 that we use to save this rare and costly gas, the assumption about the constant alpha value, so during the uh, delivery of fresh ga gas and when the rebreathing system is closed, so the stored gas is used. So this assumption actually is not true. And using this uh, profile likelihood framework, we do not need to use uh, to solve analytical the equation. So a numerical integration can be used. So we decide to propose a more realistic model. It means that in addition in addition to the enrichment fraction which is plotted here, so this amplitude, there is also there would be a higher auction a 17 enrichment fraction in subsequent gas inhalation because here the rebreathing system is closed so some of the exhaled gas is already stored in the rebreathing system. So there is a should be an increase which we modeled with the slope 1. Similarly, in the rebreathing phase, where no fresh oxygen pulses are delivered and only the gas stored in the system is reused, there would be a decrease of oxygen enrichment. And we, we call it an advanced model and then we wanted to know how much prior knowledge about the other parameters are needed to reliably quantify CMRO2. So first we decided not to give any information about the auction enrichment fraction. If that is not enough, we would use one parameter that is the enrichment fraction of fresh 17 or pulse, so this amplitude. If that is not sufficient, then the integrated value, the average value which is shown here would be used. And if th that is not sufficient as well, then several alpha related parameters like slope 1 and slope 2 should be measured and included as a prior knowledge into the model. 
So now let's explore the profile likelihood. So here you see the profile likelihood of various model parameters. Here SIMRO2, our target parameter, two other rate constant and four alpha related parameters. So if we do not use any prior about these alpha related parameters, the SIMRO2 is structurally non identifiable. Then if we use this auction enrichment fraction due to fresh pulse delivery as an input parameter, then the practical non-identifiabilities can be seen and especially for our target parameter SIMRO2. But then if we use the average alpha value during Mm, pulse delivery that also account that some of the gas, seventeen of gas is exhaled and stored in the system. But since we know the total amount of the gas that was delivered, we we control it. When we use this as a um, prior knowledge, then as you can see here, the um, non-identifiability -identi are resolved and similar to is identifiable. Let's now have a look at the model fitting. So we performed two experiments, experiment 1 and experiment 2. Experiment 2 has a higher spatial resolu resolution, 8 millimeters, compared to experiment 1. And we um, averaged the, the data in the white and gray matter of the, of the human brain. So here you see in the table the SIMRO2 rates and as you, as you can see for the white matter from two experiment compared to the gold standard 15 of PET and for the gray matter as well, they, they are in the same ballpark. But for example in experiment 2 the separation between white and gray matter is better compared to experiment 1 because the spatial resolution was higher and the values are closer, closer to the literature paid pet data. It was fitting using the advanced uh, qu quantification model. So let's compare the previous model, the simplified model, and the advanced model. So the advanced model is shown in red, and the simplified is in blue. And as you see, the advanced model better fits the data. So now let's conclude what we learned today. The SIMRO2 can be measured reliably in 17 O MRI experiment with 17 O gas inhalations. The advanced quantification model is beneficial and helps us to save rare and costly 17 O gas. The prior knowledge about only one alpha related parameter is required. The obtained SIMRO2 rates are in a good agreement with the 15 of PET studies. However, SNR should be increased if we want to perform a pixel wise SIMRO2 quantification and not to average in big Y or great matter tissues, and the partial volume effect should be corrected. To address uh, the issue with SNR, in our recent publication in NeuroImage, we propose to use pr uh, prior knowledge to use information from the corrugated proton data. And we used edge information and implemented it as an anisotropic non homogeneous filter. In the end, the signal to noise ratio of the 17 0 images reconstructed in iterative reconstruction procedure are uh, higher and we showed a principal feasibility of pixel-wise SIMRO2 quantification. And, uh, our colleagues from mm, uh, Medical Physics Department of Radiology from University Medical Center of Freiburg and uh, our partners, uh, industrial partners Nuchem Isotope Imaging which uh, which supported, which greatly supported our 17.0 MRI project. If you got interested in 17.0 MRI, do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you for your attention.